Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Red Dragon Sports. I'm your host, Jeff Hazard, Assistant Director of Athletics and Sports Information Director here at SUNY Oneonta. And as we continue through our fall season, we're going to spotlight women's soccer tonight. So join me after the break while I'll have in studio head women's soccer coach, Liz McGrath. So I got this new family and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to the show. Joining me now in studio is head woman soccer coach Liz McGrail. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Chef. How are things going so far? Well, we're off to a pretty good start, three and one. Yeah, three and one. We uh, finished the Mayor's Cup weekend. We won the Mayor's Cup this year. Uh, quality, quality team, RIT. We beat a team that was nationally ranked uh, early in the season. How important is it to win, win a game like that against a team like that? Um, it gives your team confidence, but it's also important down the road. Last year we lost to RIT at RIT in an opening tournament, and that game cost us the NCAA tournament for the at-large bid. R RIT ended up going, and we were bumped out. So can be important. You don't want to think about those things this early on. but Right. Well, but I mean, like you said, I mean, every game, you know, especially non-conference-wise, you know, because if you don't happen to win your conference, you know, you want those quality wins against quality opponents. So, I mean, when, you know, we always talk about how you build your schedule. I mean, can you talk a little bit about philosophically how you, how you um, go about doing that? Well, strength of schedule is huge. It's one of the second criteria for the NCAA. Um, but for us, I mean, for my philosophy, I want to play teams that I expect to be playing in the NCAA tournament. Our goal is to to win our conference, get into the NCAA tournament. If we don't, we're disappointed. And we're spending our non-conference games playing opponents that are are that caliber so that we know what to expect when we get there. We have the experience. And, and if we can win those games early on, we're going to have home field advantage when it comes to that as well. Right. It's always important, especially in the conference you know, tournament, because uh, now the way the tournament format is, is you can get a home game throughout the, the tournament. And, and that last Saturday, you'd rather be playing at home than somewhere you know, where it could be field conditions could cost or something. So uh, this year's team, uh, talk a little bit about uh, you know, some of the players we have and how you're building your you know, the squad and how they're coming along? Uh, th this year is the first time I think we don't have a freshman starting in a long time, so experience is going to go a long way. Uh, I feel like we've got, uh, we've been, we have to feel like we've had the talent the last few years, but I think we've got the leadership to go with that now. Um, so you have two of those leaders coming on the show today. Um, you know, just experience. We have a couple new players that are going to step in and help with that, but um, Carly, Regs, uh, Googs have been starting together for, f this is their fourth year, yeah. so yeah, when you have that kind of consistency and leadership, it helps a lot. Right, I mean, uh, especially when you have, you know, younger players that come into the program. Uh, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the younger players that may, you know, stand out this year for us? Uh, first year players, we have we have five freshmen, two transfers. Um, probably our most um, standout freshman that's going to um, hopefully get some goals for us is uh, Casey Walsh from Pearl River. Um, she's coming off the bench to rotate up top, and then um, both our transfers are going to definitely get some some good time. We have uh, Lonnie Vecarelli who transferred from um, St. Rose, so she won a national championship at Division Two at St. Rose. Um, and has come, and she's getting time in both the midfield and up top for us. Um, she's really breaking into that starting lineup. She's very close, so yeah. we'll see what happens as year goes on. Yeah. Um, and Taylor Messina um, is starting to, you know, it's taking a little bit more time for her to get used to our style, but Lonnie was here in the spring, so Taylor, Taylor's going to get some time as well. Right. Now, uh, having someone who won a national championship at, at Division II uh, level, uh, I mean, what kind of, what are you hoping that that brings to your team? Good question. Um, I mean, that's all our ultimate goal is to win a national championship. So that experience um, and also knowing how important every person on the team is because she came off the bench to help that team and knowing that um, every every role is an integral part of that, right. kind of that experience. And, um, I mean, for her to come in and say this is, um, you know, it's slightly different experience, but the level is, is very similar, um, you know, challenging for right. her. So that says a lot, I think. Right. Um, so as we uh, move into the season, I mean, 
you know, even though we're four games in, it's almost like third almost. You know, we play 18 games every year. Um, what do you got coming up? How does it look uh, going into the midseason? Uh, this weekend, we have tough weekend on the road. So um, we started off on the road, went one and one, um, came home for the Mayor's Cup, played some good games, got two wins. Um, and now we got to go back on the road and see if we can put two games together on the road. Yeah. Uh, we play Skidmore Saturday, and then Williams, who is consistently uh, run, makes a deep run into the NCAA tournament on Sunday. So that's going to be a good road uh, um, road test. Hopefully, um, we can come home with two wins. And then after that, we're getting ready for conference. Yeah. So you really play games this early on. That's going to challenge you and kind of exploit some of the things that you need to work on, so that way you can fix those going into conference. Right. Now, how does the conference look this year? Um, Cortland and New Paltz were two of the top teams last year. I think Cortland's going to be pretty strong. They've got a real tough test right now, four tough games in a row. They're, they just tied Emory. Uh, then they got Ithaca. They're in a tournament with Ithaca, U of R, and William Smith this wow. weekend. So that'll be interesting to see how they fare against those teams. So right. uh, regardless if they come out with wins or not, they're going to be used to playing some tough competition. So right. And we open up the conference with them at home. So that's going to be... Um, a good game. Right, and it'll help us being at home. Yes, definitely. Um, and then, you know, you can't take um, Brockport is always starting off strong. They don't play as tough a schedule. Um, they had a good year last year, so we'll right. see how they go. Um, Plattsburgh's coming off a, not as good a year for them, but you never you never know. Yeah, they seem so. to, uh, well, they certainly always get up for our game. Yeah, uh, no matter and we got to go we there this them. year. So uh, It's always tough up um, there. You know, overall, the conference from top to bottom is, is stronger than it's been. So That's good. Um, so these games that we're playing non-conference will certainly prepare us for, for you know, the SUNY Act Yeah, playing. I think so. Now, is it important to be able to play games back-to-back -back this early in the year? I, my philosophy, yes. I know some, some coaches may say differently. I think um, we want to train in every way possible to get us ready for the NCAAs. And right. if you want to win or play, be successful in the NCAA tournament, you got to play back-to-back. -back. Right. So um, I want to make it routine all the way through. Right. Um, and I, we pride ourselves on being a blue-collar work ethic team and, right. and trying to you know, control the things you can control, and I think you can control your fitness. Right. It's all about effort, effort and attitude. Right, so and now uh, the, the word routine is... is, is in, in a lot of sports, that's an important thing. Why don't you talk about how you build that routine throughout the year, uh, starting with like preseason, how you try to build in some of those things? Um, for me, it's you know always controlling the controllables and effort and attitude, um, but also having a sense of pride in that blue collar work ethic. Um, so if, if we can outwork any team, I think um, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Some people say. So we start that from day one, right. um, and the leadership and the returners. Uh, will help that with you know even the smallest detail and everything we do in practice will translate to the game. So even if we're doing foot skills, right, um, you're really focusing and pushing yourself um, like you're in a game because it's going to translate to the game. Right. So you kind of focus on the little things and um, trying to make everything routine. So our first weekend, the back-to-back -back games, we're trying to do everything that we're going to be doing our last weekend in NCAs. Um, so you you instill it, and that takes a lot of time in the beginning and and um, expressing your expectations to the new players. Right. So that's where the leadership comes in and lets them know and um, to understand the expectations because it would be a lot for one coach to try and instill all those little things. Right. Um, now, of course, you uh, played for us here at SUNY Oneonta. You're in our Hall of Fame. So, I mean, how many, what kinds of things when you were a player are you transferring now as, as the coach? I mean, what kinds of lessons and, and routines and things did you? I think a lot of my philosophy comes from the player that I was because I don't believe I was that uh, flashy, technically skilled player. I didn't play club. Right. Um, you know, I played in my backyard with my 11 siblings. <laughs> right. So um, I think my success really came from my work ethic, and that came from my parents, um, as well as everything that I've learned from Dave and Tracy. A lot, this program was built to that national prominence with right. Dave and Tracy Ranieri um, and I played for them and then I was their assistant coach so right. I think I'm I've taken all those experiences and and I implement it right. to my team. So uh, when you uh, have recruits on campus and when you're recruiting I mean what kinds of things do you talk about when you talk about the program? Um, pride um, we talk you know that we want to be known as a blue-collar work ethic we want um, you know we're winning and losing um, w with respect yeah. Uh, we want, you know, we leave every place 
um, better than we found it is what we try and do. And right. that's, you know, as simple as picking up after yourself. Right. Um, so, you know, always talk about, you know, what do you want people to say about you after you leave, whether right. you leave this program, whether you just leave that, that institution. Right. Um, and um, the uh, academic uh, side of it, I mean, it's not all soccer, soccer. I mean, certainly we know that we have uh, some outstanding student athletes in our, all of our programs. But for you, how do you, how do you work the academic piece into that? Uh, we have um, academic goals just like we have athletic goals, and our team GPA is a 3-3 right now, um, and it's gotten a little bit better each year. Um, and, you know, my philosophy is the things that make you successful on the field are going to also make you successful um, wherever you choose to apply them in life. Right. So that's really what, you know, this is, we pride ourselves on having, this is your second family away from home, um, and we're, we're here to help you get the, the career that you want. Now, in the uh, resources on campus, I mean, you know, how do we utilize those when, within what we do? I mean, we have a faculty mentor. My faculty mentor is the director of academic advisement, so oh, that's, oh, that's a huge <laughs> Eileen McClafferty. Um, so she's a huge help. Um, she comes into the study hall for the first couple of weeks of the season, our semester, and meets with um, each of the student athletes, kind of goes through, makes sure they're taking the right courses that keeps them on track, yeah. as well as if they're struggling with a course, she might. Um, be able to help them with study habits, um, getting them the resources with, through Cade as far as tutoring. Um, but we definitely have a lot of support with our team. Right. How important is that to have someone like that uh, who's, who can really be a resource for academics uh, th within our team? I think it's huge and um, it's a huge help for me because the players are always in your office and they're, yeah. they're coming to you as their first resource even though there's an academic um, advisor for each yeah. um, student on campus. They're coming to you and, you know, Eileen certainly trained um, to answer those questions a lot better than, than I am. So I can, um, if I'm not as confident, I, you know, always send them to her to double check. Right. And it doesn't hurt that she's a big sports fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went to Notre Dame, so she knows what that's all about. Um, so what are you looking for this season? I mean, the goal is to, what, you know, get to that NCAA tournament. I mean, what do you, what do you think? Um, our goal is to host um, playoffs all the way through for this conference yeah. and see where that takes us. I think we have the talent to, uh, to make a deep run in the NCAAs, but, um, you know, we hopefully we stay healthy. Yep. Um, you know, lots of things can happen. So I think it's uh, safe to say that we'll, we'll be in the top of the conference and see what happens from there. All right. Well, we certainly want to wish you the best of luck and health, and thanks for coming by tonight. Thanks. All right, and I'd like to uh, thank my guest, uh, Liz McGrail, for coming by tonight. And if you join me after the break, I'll be joined by senior Carly D. Simone. What makes D3 special is the ability to participate in my team and within the broader community. The perfect ending to a perfect season. Being a D3 student athlete has completely expanded my life. I learned how to lead. I really found a voice. What time is it? It's, time. it's more about the experience rather than just a sport itself. Without the experience of being a Division III student athlete, I wouldn't be the person who I am today. NCAA Division III. Discover. Develop. Dedicate. Welcome back to the show. Joining me now is senior women's soccer player, Carly D. Simone. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. You're one of the few student athletes who gets a chance to be on here twice. I am. I know. It's uh, few, special. Yeah, a few years ago, you were here with your uh, older sister, who was yeah. a soccer player for us. And yeah. that was kind of a special time for you. Mm -hmm. Now, how has it been since then? I mean, since kind of she grown? graduated? Yeah, you know. It's sad, you know. Um, I'm just, everybody knew. Dean and I were very close. But um, it's been great since she's graduated because I've taken things that she's taught me and implemented them towards this team. So it's right. bittersweet. Yeah. <laughs> now you're one of our team captains, and so now you get to kind of be a leader for our program, even though you have been a leader since the time you were a freshman, pretty mm -hmm. much. I mean, with your, you know, you were Rookie of the Year and all that. So yeah. tell us how that is now from a different perspective, now being kind of a senior uh, with this program. I try not to think about that I'm a senior, but... Um, Unfortunately, I am. So um, I love it. I mean, it's really nice. When I was a freshman, I had my sister to look up to, juniors like Brittany Cronti, Alana Fisher, yeah. Caitlin Burke was a senior, Aaron Boyle. I could just keep going on and on. And those were great leaders to look up to. And now I realize that it's me. And um, it's nice. It's nice to finally like give back to the girls and the freshmen. And they are so young, and I realized like when I was that that age, I needed a mentor and somebody to look up to. So, I'm just happy that I can be there for them and lead them. Right now, um, what kinds of things do you uh, are you involved with with them? I mean, as far as just not just soccer. I mean, what kinds of right. things? Right. Well, I mean, it's it's huge to not only be a teammate on the field but off as well. So, 
starting from preseason, we just try to really, I mean, Liz partners us up with buddies, so we don't just go with the seniors and hang out. Like, we are with freshmen from day one, and we really just try to, when we have time in between triple sessions, yeah. to <laughs> walk around the campus, show them where their classes, is, classes are, if they need books or anything like that, just really help them out with anything, so. Right, now, wow, that's kind of a unique um, uh, situation, being partnered up with, uh, with a freshman. Is that something yeah. that's unique to the women's soccer program? It is, it's, and it's, it's unique, and it's also really nice. It's special, because I remember being a freshman, you're nervous, and to yeah. have a junior or a senior be your roommate for those nights of suspense and stress, um, it's really nice. They calm you down, they, they teach you things, they walk you through it, so it is really special, and I hope that it continues, because yeah. it's nice. Now, uh, your major is? Communication. Uh, okay, and uh, what are you hoping to do with that? I really want to do event planning. I'm, event planning. I'm minoring in public relations, and I did a internship last semester, actually, with under Tracy Ranieri yeah. for um, event planning, and I just love it. I love athletics, and I love event planning, so hopefully I do something along those lines. Now, do you think, would, it, uh, would, it, would you want it to be in athletics, so maybe game management kind of thing, maybe at a minor league level or a professional right. level? I mean, they have people that do that kind of thing. Yeah, um, to be honest, when I started, I didn't think I wanted that at all. Um, I was strictly for big parties and gatherings and weddings and yeah. stuff like that. And then Tracy kind of brought me to my attention that I, my passion is athletics. So um, I was fortunate enough to go to Indianapolis last year for a yeah. NCAA inclusion forum. And that's when I think I realized that I really would love to do something along the lines of sports. I don't even know, to be honest with you, like what it would be if it was for a specific team or just NCAA in general. But I do now see that I have a lot of options. For well, that, there's so. so many uh, openings, and certainly, uh, you know, I just you just reminded me that you went to that NCAA mm -hmm. inclusion forum. Can you just briefly talk about that experience and sure. what kinds of things you you saw out there? Yeah, it was. It was an experience that I'll always remember. It was truly inspirational. The type of people that I got to meet, the speakers, there was all sorts of athletes from everywhere, and they just talked about how athletes with what they say disabilities and how they really aren't even disabilities, and just great, great athletes coming together and showing that there's little things that you can, if you want, block out of like being a team, you know, like. There's all types of things, you know, if like transgender, bisexual, gay, lesbians, they all came together and talked about it and how athletes just fought through that. And there was a tra there was a, a runner, she had one leg and she had a prosthetic leg and she told this story how she um, did one of her sprints and she was in the tournament and she her leg just fell off. It was a hot day and the, the humidity or something and it fell right off and she got down and everybody was like, oh no. And she just got right back up, put it on, and finished the race. So it was really inspirational, and it was actually moving that Tracy got to bring some of our athletes, Jeff Christian, when right. um, there to realize and see and really bring it back to Oneonta. Right. So it was well, great. that's what I mean. So have you been able to utilize any of that maybe initially uh, within your team this year? Um, so far, I mean, yes and no, nothing very serious, but at the same time, it's just even as small as just bringing everyone together yeah. and making everybody feel comfortable and at home. And like Liz said, they're right. second family. So. Right. Um, well, uh, season-wise, I mean, we're kind of in the you know early season here. We're off to a good start, three and one. We won yeah. the Mayor's Cup, yeah. uh, which is always exciting. Yeah. Uh, we should we own that tournament. You know, yes. I mean, we've won it more than everyone else, which is we should with the home team, right? Yeah. Uh, so the congratulations. Thank you. Uh, what do you look for as we go through this season? To win. Three years, okay, to win. <laughs> All right. um, I know I tell the girls this. I think I've already told them three times, but um, it's really nice to see. My freshman year, we went to the Sweet 16, yep. and it wasn't because of the talent. It was just team chemistry and the bond and wanting to do it for each other. And since then, um, I haven't really seen it like it was freshman year, and it's just special now that I actually feel it again. And this group of girls, we can win. And I mean, maybe it's unrealistic to say that I want to go to the Final Four, and I think that we can, but at the same time, our boys have done it. It's been done. We've won. So. Yep. Um, I personally don't think it's unrealistic. I think that we're going to go far. Right, and I think that uh, the work ethic, as Coach talked about earlier on the show, and, and, and you know, yourself, just your work ethic and the commitment to you know, winning and, and being excellent, I think, is yeah. going to carry us a long way. So exactly. we wish you good luck and, and you. hope everything goes well this year. Thank you very much. All right, well, thanks for coming by. Thanks. I'd like to uh, thank Senior Captain Carly DeSimone for coming by tonight. 
And after the break, I'll be joined by our other senior captain, Amanda Regensberger. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to the show. Joining me now is senior women's soccer captain Amanda Regensberger. Welcome to the show, Amanda. Thank you. This is uh, like nothing for you, right? You're a com, uh, mass comm major. Mass comm major. You want to be yeah. on TV, do you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of a big test for you. A big test. Uh, I don't. Wouldn't say that this is a big test. I think when I have to do basketball games, yeah. that's more of a big test for me. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to believe you're a senior now on our on our soccer team, and and things have gone well for you for four years. You've been a starter for us, and yeah. now you're a captain. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, you know, as you're a senior soccer player for us. You know, coming in as a freshman, I. I didn't expect it to be the way it was, so as a freshman, I, did, I didn't start in the beginning, and then I had to work my butt off, so <laughs> now being like a leader on the team, it's good to be able to be there for the, the freshmen who aren't starting yet and who are working hard and still are, are not getting the minutes that they are expecting, but it, it comes with time and it comes with practice and it comes with the effort and the attitude, and everything will fall into place, and I keep trying to push that to them that they just need to keep working, that it'll come, it'll come. So it's, it's nice to be a leader and be able to have experienced that myself. Right. I mean, it stunk in the beginning, but, you know, <laughs> you work for it, so it, it works out in the end. I think probably that's, I mean, that's part of being an athlete. I mean, if you want to play and get better, you have to, to work at it. So for you, do you find yourself as more of a vocal leader or lead by example person? Um, Carly's more of the vocal leader. I kind of <laughs> leave her up to the talking and the encouraging. I, I like to lead by example. Uh, I, I like to work hard and push myself every day in practice just to get better. And so I, I like to do the behind the scenes work. <laughs> right. Now, Carly talked about, uh, you know, being involved with the Aaron classroom. Everybody gets paired up with a, with a freshman when they come in. How's that for you, uh, being able to work with a freshman right off the bat in preseason? And um, unfortunately, this year, my freshman didn't, not that she didn't make the team, she kind of quit herself okay. so personally this year it was different but the, all the other years it's it's nice to be paired up with someone younger because you're there for them it, it is mentally and physically exhausting during preseason so it's right. nice to have someone who's gone through it so many times before and and can keep pushing you and keep getting you to go every day right now how do uh, how does the women's soccer team go about building camaraderie and team chemistry we do a lot a lot a lot of teamwork together uh, sometimes people don't understand why we do so many team bonding experiences, but it, it does bring the team together, and we really pride ourselves in how close our, te our team is and how much of friendships we have and how this is our second family. And it's nice to have the people that we have on, ca on campus like together because you know, this is the second home. You get homesick and you can run to someone, either upperclassmen or a teammate, and it's, it's nice to have. Right. Do you think in the long run that type, those types of activities, you know, bringing the team closer together may help you in like a tough game and, and you're trying to grind out a victory? And it definitely does because you always know you can count on that person after having so much team bonding and team chemistry. So you know that you have that, that bond with them and you know you can count on them. And sometimes you need to get down on them too to like get them to keep going, to keep pushing because after all, you guys are friends, you right. know, and you, you got to keep pushing them and you got to expect from them. And, and to have someone expect something from you pushes you to go that much further. So it's nice. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, academics and the academic program uh, with Coach McGrail. Talk a little bit about your academic experience and, and how it's been for you during your four years. It's really nice to have um, Eileen McClaverty there for us. She's always been such a major support. I remember my freshman year, we went to the NCAAs and we were on the road, and she came in on the bus with this big basket for all of us, like NCAA, Sweet 16, and it's really just such a nice gesture to get from someone so high up that you still you have that support 
from right. the team and and even with academics she's always there she's always willing to help so her office door is always open so are it's nice to have are those the things that you found during your experience here at SUNY Oneonta as a student athlete uh, that the support system is there for for everyone oh yeah there's people who will even come up to you after games that you may not even know as far as Dick Blur and his wife comes up to you after a game and good game Amanda and and at first I was like Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't really understand sometimes how much support you really have from the community and the faculty staff. So it's really nice to see like familiar faces at home games as well as away games. Right. And when you say Dick Bear, I mean he's he's at every game, and, and I mean he, you know, he's been retired here for quite a few years, but you know, longtime admissions director, and so he understands the importance of you know being a student athlete and what you know the time commitment that it takes for, for right. all of you. So how have you been able to do that over the four years of balancing your time? I mean, it's hard. It is. I won't say it's easy. It is very hard to be a student athlete, but the experience you get is just amazing, and it really does teach you so many lessons throughout life because you, you'll you never have to be, well, you might have to juggle so many things in, in a single day, and to be able to get through it and have the support you have even from your team to keep right. going, it's it's nice, but it'll teach you a lot for through life. Now, what um, can you point to one specific highlight for you know so far I mean up to this point I mean certainly we you know you're looking forward to you know the rest of the season but as far as like through your first three years uh, full years anything highlight anything sticks out for you um, I will have to say beating U of R my freshman year I didn't play that first game that we beat them in their own tournament yeah. but coming back for the NCAAs and hosting them at our home and and ending his his year with a loss and beginning his year with the loss is just it's a great feeling as far as team wise and you know it it's great to know that you went that far too right so well we certainly hope that there's more memories to come and and i know that coach mcgrail and, and carly they're both looking forward to a great year and i know you are as well so we wish you good yeah. luck thank you and health uh, as you go forward so and we'll see you in the ncaa tournament thank we hope. you all right thank well thanks you. for coming by <laughs> Well, I'd like to thank all my guests tonight from the women's soccer program. And as always, you can follow them at www.oneontaathletics.com. And certainly uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, the women's soccer program does have, uh, it's at Oneonta W Soccer. So you can follow them on Twitter. And I'd like to thank you for joining us this week. And we'll see you next time on Inside Red Dragon Sports.